What's up, everybody? My name is Gian. Welcome to another episode of the FMA Dumpster Fire podcast. Today is going to be a true dumpster fire against uh, against my better judgment, but I suppose true to my nature. I'm going to do a response video to what I thought was a very toxic podcast run by somebody that I thought did a complete disservice to the Filipino martial arts. And again, far be it for me to be critical of anyone who holds an opinion. God knows I've been wrong in the past. This one is a special occasion. So stick around. We're going to be discussing this here on the FMA Dumpster Fire podcast. Let's start that again. Fuck out of bed, bitch. Go. You're finished. Ah, get up. 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 Okay, that's what happened. That's what happened. Okay, there's audio now. I know there's audio now. So let me just start this again. Jeez, what a... I think <laughs> I think maybe the universe is telling me not to do this. Maybe. I'm good. Thank you, lazy boy. I appreciate you. Okay, so as I was saying, against my better judgment, but true to my nature, I'm going to... I'm going to do a response. I'm going to do a response to this. Well, what I feel is a really toxic and um, just, oh, again, I'm going to, I'm going to try not to get too uh, in my feelings about this and really discuss the nature of this discussion, which I thought was incredibly toxic. And as I said earlier, far be it for me, you know, to condemn somebody for expressing their opinions, right? I've had some opinions that I've expressed in the past that I no longer longer subscribe to. Uh, I'm very public with my apologies when it comes to being wrong. Uh, but anyway, we're going to discuss some topics here. And these are dudes talking about should non-Filipinos lead Filipino martial arts system. Now, a few things you ought to know about this podcast is that, uh, see that guy right here in the middle, Antoken, uh, and this guy, June, right? So they run this podcast and, and they had this wonderful idea to ask a very contentious and a very controversial issue 
and then to carry out the podcast by delegating a perspective. Now, I understand that's how, you know, uh, high school or, or formal debate club um, rules are for, for, for debating. But and, and here's what I want you to pay attention to as you continue to watch. If you're still watching this, you know, which I appreciate very much. Thank you for watching. They ask a question like, should non-Filipinos lead Filipino martial arts systems? But then they delegate a perspective instead of speaking from the heart, instead of speaking from what you actually believe. And you'll see throughout this just crazy, super toxic podcast that some members of this panel actually want to express their honest opinion. And this Paul guy, this Antoken, goes, no, 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 let's... uh." S stick to the, the the perspective that I've delegated to you. So the, number one, that is what I believe was really ridiculous about this podcast is you ask such an important question that is absolutely worth discussing and then you delegate a perspective and then you dissuade people from actually sharing what they actually believe in and instead have them maintain and, and try to argue that I mean, this could ruin somebody's reputation. You know what I mean? If, if there are some items that were spoken in this podcast that you're about to watch with me, parts and pieces, that if it was taken out of context, it could absolutely destroy relationships. So I don't, first of all, I don't think you should have run this podcast by delegating a perspective to such an important question. Let's get that out of the way. Okay. And for you guys watching this FMA Dumpster Fire podcast, now I want you to pay attention to the facial expressions of these people, okay? Because there is a built-in inauthenticity about what these people actually believe. I feel like I feel like you, the viewer, if you watch the facial expressions, if you watch the body language of these people, you can actually, hopefully determine what they actually believe in and when they've been put into a corner to discuss such an important topic with a delegated perspective, which was absolutely stupid to begin with. Uh, but I understand that some of these people had no idea what the question was going to be, that they were put in this position, which is, I think is absolutely ridiculous, to, to, especially when asking such an important question like that. So thumbs down to you, buddy, who ran this thing and it's I've, okay. Okay. We're going to play the first clip and we're going to talk about it. But I really need to calm myself down. Okay. So here's the first clip. I, I have something to man. show you. I might get in trouble for this, but I'm going to throw it in there anyway. So after you said that, I'll give you something to think about. So right now, one of uh, the leaders of a famous discussion is led by an American. <laughs> They're talking about Dean Franco. They're talking about FMA discussion, right? And the guy can't even mention his name. He just did not have the balls to even just say it straight up. Now, look, I've been wrong about a lot of things, and sometimes I run my mouth when I shouldn't. But I never, I, I, I never hide behind shit. You know what I'm saying, you guys? This is, this is, this is what is, oh, is just so annoying about this guy to me. He brings up a point about FMA discussion. He wants to talk about Dean Franco being a white guy running a Filipino-based organization. He can't even mention him by name. What a coward. Here it is again. Of that. I, I have something to man. show you. I might get in trouble for this, but I'm going to throw it in there anyway. So after you said that, I'll give you something to think about. So right now, one of uh, the leaders of a famous discussion is led by an American. <laughs> and... and Here's the thing. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Let, let me explain. So you, you and here's the thing. When I met them, or me and June met them, we said he is more Filipino than some Filipinos we know. Why isn't he allowed to lead an FMA? First of all, I don't believe you so meant that. How will you guys answer that? If even our own 
Filipinos are looking at the looking at him as he's more Filipino than us. Ain't ain't, ain't those two guys with him also leaders of that organization? <laughs> right back at you. <laughs> no. No, Julius, you're not a leader of FMA discussion, actually. Actually, F FMA discussion just existed and was well on its way to being what it is today long before you jumped in. And to, to make a claim that you're part of the leadership of FMA discussion just because you jumped on board and now you're a moderator. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you about why, first of all, why I left FMA discussion forum. But first, let me tell you about why I chose to support FMA discussion, the YouTube channel. I chose uh, to support FMA discussion 100% because of Dean Franco and what he was trying to do, the service he was trying to provide for the Filipino martial arts community. Let me get, let me just, let me just, uh, let me get on camera here so I can look you right in the eye. Okay. You are not part of the leadership of FMA discussion. Dean Franco is the leadership of FMA discussion. The reason I promoted FMA discussion was because of, because Dean is honest. He's authentic. He's vulnerable. He doesn't need to do this. He interviews, he interviews Filipino martial arts masters, grandmasters, Tuhand, from such a pure perspective without Trojan horsing any of his preconceived notions, any of any baggage, which I believe you do, which I believe is, is natural, right? We, we want to do this, Julius. But here's the thing. The reason FMA discussion became what it is and what attracted me to it was because of Dean Franco's purity. Because he was willing to discuss anything with anyone with a kind of openness that we rarely see in the Filipino martial arts. And I would indict myself in that. I now have preconceived notions and opinions. And to some degree, this makes me an ineffective catalyst to be able to do what FMA discussion does better than any other Filipino martial arts media outlet. And that is to let these masters, grandmasters, two Hans, Datus speak untainted. And that is such an important service to the Filipino martial arts. We've lost so much of our near history and so much is left to you know, in interpretation, he said, she said, and when a, a, a media outlet like FMA discussion comes along with a host like Dean Franco, who allows these masters to speak in their own terms and in their own words without being swayed in any sort of direction, that is frigging valuable. And to say that you're part of that leadership is dishonest. You are absolutely not. In fact, I don't watch any other FMA discussion videos that isn't led by Dean Franco. And so I, I think the fact that there was this laughter at this question is disgusting to me. But again, who am I, right? This is nothing personal, but I, I'm, I'm, you know, you're a very smart guy. You make a lot of valid points and I'm going to get to the valid points. Okay. This is not an attack on any individual here. All right. This is not an attack on India. Every one, every one of these panelists that you see have something to offer. I will give, though, special kudos right away to Riddell and to Michael um, and, and also to Tony um, for trying their best. You know, their their authenticity uh, comes through and, and you'll see that in this video. It's, it's, a, it's a triumvirate, homie. It's not a dictatorship, son. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. By the way, we still got a lot of comments. I'm going to save Julius from that one. Yo, FMA <laughs> discussion is Dean Franco, okay? Let's just get that straight. Michael, any opinion on that? By the way, no. before we get to Michael's point, the reason I left FMA discussion, the forum, was exactly because of this kind of toxicity. It's exact. You know what? I understand that certain Filipinos have generational scars about, you know, our colonial past. I get that. I totally get that. And I respect that. That's not my perspective personally. 
I think mine is a bit more nuanced. There are, there, there are certainly great things that came out of our tragic past, right? But I, I'm not gonna, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just not gonna be this, you know, like how survival arts is. I don't know if you guys know, but anyway, I don't wanna drag another crappy organization through the mud. But in any case, here it is. I'm just I'm gonna play it. I mean, Joe, you said it all right there, man. I mean, it's uh, it's almost like crowdfunding, right? I mean, <laughs> it's what it is. I mean, you say, oh, well, there are more Filipinos than you, they are. Why can't they lead it? Well, it, it, it's about uh, uh, demographics, about where 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 you're at. Uh, assuming you're in the Midwest, like where I'm at, sure. You know, people will say. Hey, that's that's the uh, that's an authentic uh, uh, Filipino martial arts instructor who's not from the Philippines. But okay. the the essence is, is is that there. I mean, then you see an, uh, and that then that practitioner goes to an uh, actual Filipino instructor. They, they already have a different mindset. They'll say, "Oh, you're a Filipino, but wait a minute, my instructor taught me this, but you're telling me, telling me it this way." So and you and that instructor said, "Well, this is how we do it at home." Now, can that instructor said? Can, can that instructor said this is how we do it at home? Good point. Okay, there there is some validity to what Michael is saying in that you simply cannot replace the perspective of, of an instructor who lives in the Philippines and who's trained in the Filipino martial arts. That's irreplaceable. That's absolutely valuable. And he does, and, and like the rest of these guys, they do make valid points that um, there are some things that a, a Western instructor can't teach as effectively as somebody who lives in the Philippines and, and, and who lived that. And this is purely, this has nothing to do with skill. This has nothing to do with the combative elements of the Filipino martial arts. It has everything to do with art, history, and culture, which is fine, which is fine. We can be honest about that. So Michael, absolutely right. But I will say this, I will say that there are plenty of non-Filipinos who learn from Filipinos went back to the Philippines and they themselves taught other Filipinos. Okay. So there are those examples. There are examples of white guys who dedicate their life to the Filipino martial arts, go back to the Philippines and teach Filipinos there quite effectively, actually. So there, there are examples, but I do, my God, I know exactly what you're saying. There are certain cultural elements that isn't so easily transported uh, from one culture to another, particularly if if they're tasked with having to teach it. And I think the most honest non-Filipino FMA instructors will will be very forthcoming about that. You know, they'll be very forthcoming. They're they're not gonna they're not gonna teach them things that are way beyond their scope. I think those things, if they did try to do that, is very easily identifiable. So let's you know, I need my vapes. I'm just keep I'm gonna play this for you guys. I'm just gonna disappear for a second, okay? Right there, guys. Can you can you actually tell tell me a non- Filipino instructor to tell me how do you do it at home? Well, you learn from a Filipino, but where's the authenticity? Where's the where's that character? Where's that essence? Where I could say, yeah, in in the Philippines, man, we don't fight with freaking gloves. We you know uh, we we might use our chinelas for sparring, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's the, I mean that's how we do it. I'm not joking. I mean, like use our chinelas up there. Okay, go ahead, punch. You know, I so very good, very good, Michael. So now on the other side, what if now a foreigner is really trying hard to do FMA? He put the time and he now he became an instructor. Now, this is a people we do this. Sometimes we go, man, this guy, whatever he does, he doesn't get it. <laughs> but he is leading an FMA. What what do you say on that, Rodell? Oh my God. <laughs> um, but then um, I've, I've also seen some Filipinos who move differently. No, don't don't divert the question to another area. <laughs> See that's <laughs> no no no. That's what I mean. Dude was about to give a very truthful answer that is based on meritocracy. And Antoken steered it back into this like <laughs> ridiculous direction. There was a there's a a great opportunity to have a real discussion here that was uh, purposely sabotaged by the framework of this very um uh, the, the 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 format of 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 this discussion. 
no, no, no. You can't do that. <laughs> Help him, guys. June and uh, Anthony. Kudos to you, Adele, because I know exactly what you're about to say. So even though you're you were you're cut off, I, I appreciate where you're going with that. And I understand that you guys, you know, you guys are put in a position to have to defend a delegated perspective that isn't authentic. So that's a very difficult thing to do. But good for you for trying to trying anyway. So, 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 you were just sabotaged. Let's see if you can recoup, okay? So the, the point yeah. is, um what you're trying to point out is um there are some there are some non-Filipinos who move differently from, from the from the system that they're claiming to represent, right? Well, basically he suck. So <laughs> but he's leading a group. So what we what, I mean what what do what do we have to do? You still agree that you know I mean it can work both ways, but right now you guys are allowing non-Filipino to lead and he just doesn't get it. Well he might not personally get it, but if he's able to convey the essence, he's, he's, if he's able to teach the mechanics and teach the principles and theories to allow the next student, he might not he get, it get it himself. It. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't get it. Yeah, he doesn't get it himself, but maybe through more training and practice. Is and this sincere? With his student, Is this a sincere thought? He might thought? be able to pass on the next thing. Let's, let's talk about... Uh, and you did something like our uh, trained Pikiti was saying, the essence it's you're losing the essence so should we not call that fma anymore if you want them to lead well let's look at uh let's look at uh that is a stupid point pakel fighting filipino boxing way look at his trainer his trainer's non-filipino but is able to still pass on the ens essence with fundamental principles and theories to be able to execute accordingly. So now uh, I, I, I can debate on that, but I'll leave it to you. <laughs> I, think, I think you can. That was like, that was a stretch. <laughs> you, okay. you, you know, I was reaching. <laughs> like I said, the truth reveals itself. That laughter speaks volumes. <laughs> I have I have to correct you there. I know I did. I was I have to correct I have to correct you. I have to correct you because yes, his last trainer is Freddie Roach, but he had at least four different trainers before that because like they didn't say in Elorde in Elorde gym. He trained over there. Sure. He had several other trainers. He already won championships. A lot of people don't for, forget <laughs> that. He already won championships in prior lower weight classes before he ever got valid. So valid. He was already a champion. His style is Filipino martial arts style because he actually started off as a kickboxer before he did boxing. <laughs> That's so bullshit. <laughs> Just to say that Manny Pacquiao's boxing style is Filipino martial arts and then to continue that he started his his martial arts journey in kickboxing. Uh, anyway, I'll just keep going. So he did a lot of the Sikaran Yao Yan type moves. Okay. So he did a lot of the Sikaran Yao Yan type moves. He didn't study Yao Yan. He didn't study Sikaran. And this is going to go into a slippery slope that I think is dangerous for Filipino martial artists. Okay. And that is over claiming the value of our art as it transfers to other arts. Okay. And, and uh, I'll, I'm, I'm going to let him finish. So, and then his split entry his one of his favorite opening techniques, it's not a um, American technique, but a, more of an FMA one. You see a lot of Filipinos do that. So, yeah, the, the end trainer was a, was a Banyaga, was a white guy. But what Roach did specifically, I can. All right, I'm going to stop it right there. So, yeah, can we say that Manny Pacquiao does split entries? Yeah, observably, we can see trapping, right? We, what is that? Is he, is he doing Wing Chun? Is he doing JKD? Right? Is, is a split entry uh, the exclusive domain of, of Filipino martial arts, Panantukan? No. No, and so where where is that bridge exactly? I, 
I, I just happen to think it's boxing. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. But anyway, my, my opinion is that anything that happens within the realm of that sport belongs to that sport. It, it, when, when Manny Pacquiao traps the lead arm <laughs> in order to go on the offensive, he ain't doing Wing Chun. Now, when a Wing Chun practitioner sees this, and says, oh, that's whatever, Shopao, Lakba, whatever. I actually respect that. I'm like, what you're what you're doing is you're identifying uh some universal or 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 a commonality across the arts, and you are defining it on in a language that you understand. And I completely respect that. But to claim, right, that he's doing Filipino boxing, and that when Manny Pacquiao does that. It's not an American thing is a little bit ridiculous to me. It's kind of silly. And this is the danger. And when Filipino martial artists overstep the value of our system, like he, here's the thing, right? We'll, we'll, let's talk about Rose Nama Yunus for a second, right? She, UFC champion. Uh, her uh, head coach, coach Greg Nelson is loves the Filipino martial arts and integrated uh, Hubud and Sombrada into her training leading up to that fight. And then when Philippine martial artists heard all about it, they're like, yeah, she won with FMA. And then, I, and then I speak directly with coach Greg Nelson and he explains to me exactly what purpose that serves. And I'm like, and by the way, that purpose is um, for uh, mental relaxation. That's the bulk of it. And, which is important, right? But she won that with a head kick. All right. Now, is there head kicks in Filipino martial arts? Sure, but I think when you overstep the boundaries of 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 value of Filipino martial martial arts, I think that while your intention might be good, the outcome is terrible because what you actually generate is. Uh, what you actually generate is <laughs> are, are meaningful, healthy rebuttals in which you'll have no answer for, especially when her head coach directly says why he did this. All right. We're going to play another clip. <laughs> <laughs> and then from Ace, uh, Pac is not representing Filipino boxing versus a boxer who is Filipino. If I get this right, this is uh, Ace um, Ramirez. It could be another Ace. Lots of Aces. But he's absolutely right. Like he, that comment is absolutely spot on. Listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> and then from Ace, uh, Pac is not representing Filipino boxing versus a boxer who is Filipino. Good point. Uh, good sorry, point. Who I said good point? Hold on. That, who said good point? Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> and then from Ace, uh, Pac is not representing Filipino boxing versus a boxer who is Filipino. Good point. Uh, sorry, okay. I have to disagree with that. I mean, because we, we can go to Wildcard Gym just... right now. And... Really? So, we can go to Wildcard Gym right now? That's kind of the tidbits on that. And while... Uh, no, wait, so... And, really? Okay, Before we end the topic, I will go one by one for you guys. Okay? So we'll start with uh, Rodel. If you have a non-foreigner student and he is excelling in your program, he is not your blood, you are in... Okay, he struggles uh, with this question. He's going to re-ask uh, it again properly. You want to pass on your legacy. Will you give it to the non-foreigner or to your maybe... You, uh, let's make it make it this way. You have a very good non-Filipino <coughs> practitioner and a okay, so so Filipino. Who will you give the the baton to? All right. So to reiterate that question, as an FMA system head, you have a non-Filipino who is excelling at the system versus a Filipino who is not. Who will you give the torch to when it's time? All right. Rodell, let's hear what you got to say. Of course, I will 
pass the baton to the person deserving the boom the title. Um, what if it's your son? That person, what if it's your son? There goes the goalpost. If my son sucks, then I will admit I will just pass it on to the best person available. Good for you, man. Hey, let's hear it for Radell Orias. I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar about who who he is. Uh, I know he trains Bikini Tersha. But good for you, man. Good for you. Good for you. I uh, let's play again because even even these other guys make good points as well when it comes to this. Okay. Okay. Hopefully. Okay. Next one will be Anthony, to your son or to a a, a, a great practitioner who's foreigner. My son. That's my son. <laughs> That's honest. That's honest. Good for you. Yeah, that's true. It's true. But he recoups. Stay tuned. No, no, no. I like this guy. I like Tony. I like Tony. Basically, it's hard. It's hard to teach if the person is not interested. And what? What? Because if you if your if your objective is to preserve, to to maintain the quality, how do you pass the knowledge if the person is not eager or uh, will not lend time to learn the system? Right. So who do so you give it to? Foreigner who is very good at practicing your family art, or to your son who doesn't want to practice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will give I will give it to the one who deserves it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're talk, Filipino and then Filipino we are talking about that my son. <laughs> it's true, right? He kind of moved the goalpost. He moved the goalpost. <laughs> Good for you, Tony. Good for you, man. Because we're talking about right. Filipino blood, right? So it's in the blood. So mm. blood or non non blood? Uh, uh, the one who deserved, basically. Which is who? <laughs> Which is My who? Son. Either of them. Either of them. My son still deserves. <laughs> How about you, Tony? Basically, it's my son. <laughs> <laughs> You're the last uh, name fits in the family art. It's my it's son. Family art. <laughs> yeah, Tony answer seems very answer genuine. Answer same question. Very genuine answer. I'll I'll always pick family after that because here's the thing. That's also a genuine answer, right? I got to give it to Julius. He, and this is where he he begins to make sense. Okay, what he says here, I personally don't agree with, but it makes sense. Why I don't understand why this is a debate because in other martial arts that's a known thing. Like even if the son sucks or the daughter sucks, it gets passed to them. It doesn't get passed to the white boy or black boy practitioner that was like loyal to them for like 30, 40 years. They don't, you know, belly ache about it. Why are they belly aching with us? I think what that has to do is because they see Filipinos as like Asian light no, or here Malay we go. light. Here we and they go. feel that they can push us over like that. My thing is like I practice a style like that. I know it's never going to be given to me because I'm not their clan member. I mean, I am their clan member because I signed a blood compact with them. Y'all, any, any, any one of you have to sign a blood compact? But it still is going to go to his kid, even if I'm better than, 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 than the kid. A complete dismissal of meritocracy. I can respect for the sake of a family clan. I can actually respect that. But let's let's call a spade a spade. When you do this, and again, I respect the opinion, but when you do this, when you dismiss meritocracy as a tool to propagate your art and you want to keep it within the family, it's oftentimes a form of self-sabotage. And in some perspectives particularly the outside perspectives, it can appear very selfish and self-destructive. But I cannot argue with Julius here based on uh, what he believes is the right thing to do for him. So 
I, I respect that opinion. In my, how I'm going to do it in my uh, system, if I grow, if, you know, if I choose to end up having kids, um, I come from a sit style. So there's always like two or three, right? If my child is not that good, then perhaps like my daughter would be, or maybe their cousin, but it's always going to stay within family. So, madaming kabit. Yeah. It's respect, gonna, respect. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, maybe it's going to go to the illegitimate. I don't know. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. No, I mean, like, <laughs> Michael. Because, because, because think about it. Like, then don't call it a family system. It, all, all of a sudden, it's going to be Francisco, and then you're going to give it to, like, you know, Todd Berger or something like that. Like, that's fucking <laughs> bullshit. Like, you know what I mean? Like... Musashi style has always been to the, come to All his right. family. Like, All right. So throughout this whole interview, it's funny that Julius wants to be the defender of the Filipino way. And yet all of his examples refer to Japanese and Chinese systems. It's it's strange, isn't it? Like, can't the Filipinos have their own set of rules that may be uniquely Filipino? I know we're talking about martial arts, but if, if you feel inclined, go ahead and try to trace down the full video. But practically all of the examples that he cites to defend the family system is based upon Japanese and Chinese arts, which is mildly ironic to me. Miyamoto Musashi, the historical Miyamoto Musashi. Why is this an argument? Yeah, well, okay, why Michael. is this an argument? Mike, Mike. Mike, Mike sir. And by the way, time check. Yep. Uh, almost done. Yeah. We're almost done. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, it stays within the family. It's a, it's a martial, it's a family. Again, I respect this opinion. I think Michael articulates it a little bit better and with, with in a way that's more relatable to me. So uh, here he goes. Martial arts is going to stay in the family. Uh, yes, it, it might not uh, pro uh, proliferate at the same time or not expand, but it's within the family, right? Honest. Uh, yes, I have a. I might have an awesome practitioner, uh, but it has to stay within. Uh, if uh, if my my uh, awesome practitioner wants to uh, generate a, a, a spinoff from my own system, that's his name brand. That becomes his family brand, but it has to stay within. Word. Okay. How about you, June? You're not asking opinion. You're asking like my stance, right? The stance yes, is your stance, your the stance. stance that you gave me. Okay. No, 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 no. This is your your belief now. Oh, my belief. Okay. Well, if Where it's a family, yeah. If it's a family art, it's a family art. It goes to to my kin. Um, it's gonna carry on the the kin's name, and uh, basically, uh, if there is a student of mine that performs a lot better, ideally, to still kind of keep it within the family, I would expect maybe out of respect and everything that that student kind of help cultivate the family and still continue to maintain from there theoretically but um but yeah that my position is, is son or daughter whatever which train pakiti said son or daughter so, yeah. so or the, debate today, <laughs> the topic of the debate today is should fma be run by a non-filipino by blood i do believe that the both panels did uh defend their position here even though they were placed on a on a category that they are not willing to or don't believe in it, uh, I do believe that uh, us uh, being here in the United States right now and seeing a lot of uh, non-Filipino practitioners doing FMA, they are actually representing FMA in a good positive way. So there's a there's always a pros and cons um, in promoting a non-Filipino to lead. But I do believe way, that I, I do believe that uh, um, non-Filipinos sometimes do great job in promoting FMA. Uh, we cannot discount that. Uh, but as a whole, for Filipino who is who's who has a blood line, I suggest that we do a good part and make sure that the lineage that we are handling is passed on. The right way. <clears throat> the right way. Awesome. First of all, um, he's right, right? He's right. It seems almost painful for, for him to get out that 
Yeah, non-Filipinos are making amazing contributions to the Filipino martial arts. It seems almost painful for him to say that. Uh, but he's right. It's true. We can't discount that. Um, let's let's uh, let's let's continue. I think the debate uh, on this is because a lot of uh, GMs or a lot of high-ranking positions right now who are Filipinos are not doing a great job in teaching and relaying the message to the next generation. What the hell? was that continuation of what would have been an otherwise good thought wow go ahead and play that back uh i'm just gonna move forward i think as a race there wow. should should not be just filipino by blood it should be given to who's deserving okay. now if it's okay. a family art i do see the point that it should be given to the family so I do believe that, uh, but oh, as, oh, has an answer. Yep, as leaders, right now, the whole panel here are leaders in their own particular art. It's our job to make sure that we are teaching, regardless of race, color, age, the proper way. So when they come out and says, "I am a Filipino." martial artists and i'm leading this group they are really leading it and showing the right essence of being filipino martial artists any last comment from the panel <sighs> rodel did you get to share your position oh i'm sorry yeah yeah he did yes, I, I did didn't get to R rodel's <laughs> position go ahead rodel Yes, I believe that um, as long as um, the person um, is worth it, um, he, he did his part in, in learning the art, the system. I like it doesn't this guy. No matter if, if he's pure Fili uh, Filipino by blood or not. Meritocracy, um, baby. In this day and age, we need to have an open mind and um, we need to be more accepting when it comes to sharing our our art and our culture who is this guy who very... is this rudell guy i really like him that was i really like him does anybody know him um uh from anyone watching i this guy seems really genuine and, and he's very careful he's very careful and and uh, calculated with his words i like this guy in chicago uh, and if you, if you don't mind mike putting a link Oh, now the they're comments, just sharing. So people oh, absolutely. Just, just, yeah. Uh, they're sharing events. I think so these events might have been passed. So I'll skip to it. That we are uh, only Friday. So Let's go here. In case when the pandemic ends, uh, feel free to visit our hometown uh, during uh, July 25, uh, November 2, and Holy Friday. So basically, these are the traditions that we are uh, promoting uh, FMA or our niece. And if you want to join us, welcome to, to uh, we have got Manila, got Philippines, and uh, Paite Arnis, uh, we represent Paite Arnis as well. And if you want to learn about our system, just reach out to me and I can uh, uh, assist you in, in going to our hometown or to, to introduce to our, to our maestro. And basically, uh, there's a last thought on the on the topic that we are discussing about is uh, when we pass knowledge, it's not all about the the reason behind the the one that they they gave money or they gave uh, what they call that uh, invest time. If we are the teacher, remember that uh, the knowledge that we provide to our students, we 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 what they call that we you should be able to be truthful and trustworthy. If we have that knowledge, so basically that's the the whole point of, of on my belief uh, when you right on when you teach or when you learn. Okay, thank you. Yes, good for you. Shout out the GAT system, by the way, one of the most um, combat elegant uh, systems that I've ever come across. I don't know much about it, but I, I want to know more. And uh, I believe his uh, Tony's offer is sincere. If you guys can find him. He's willing to take you to his hometown and get you guys a truly unique uh, Filipino martial arts 
experience that I think it's worth. That's a uh, GAT. I think that is Garimot Arnis training. I believe the current head is uh, Abundio Salazar Baet. Great system, great system. And uh, again, at the beginning of this, I asked you guys to watch their faces. I asked you guys to to really examine their mannerisms and examine their body language because the format of this whole thing was thrown off from the start. And uh, I can tell, I can tell, Tony, you are uh, you, in, in this moment absolutely sincere and your passion and your love for Filipino martial arts, and in particular, the style that's most connected to your heart is absolutely genuine. And uh, I just wanted to acknowledge that. Anybody else on the panel? Good for you. Yeah, Good for you, Tony. Um, I just wanted to promote tomorrow. I'll have a very cool um, female-centric episode in FMA discussions, a former student of uh, Gordano Sano oh, and nice. a colleague. Um, <clears throat> and also, I just want to promote my friend, uh, Vaughn. So if people are interested in learning I've been here, Kali, so, or um, Yao Yan in Southern California. Just reach out to him. I'll provide links. It's not that I practice any of those styles. It's just that I owe that guy a lot. He's been very nice. And, yeah, been very send the link. Yeah. yeah, and then as, as opposed to this, my I guess my final thing I have to say is we can talk about, like, you know, kindness or whatnot. But when you sign up for a clan system, you know, understand that you're really not part of that family. Even, even if you do sign a blood compact, also understand that the reality of almost 99.999% of human history is nepotism. Because prior to, to the kind of economy that we had now, in most of the history of humanity, if you were a blacksmith, like that means that your great, 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 great grandfather, you know, were, they were Smith. That's why that's your last name. It was handed down, right? The different occupations. It's been like that, you know, pretty much until the advent of like the industrial age where the, it, it, it changed. So it is like that, too, when it comes to like martial systems, typically the warriors of a particular tribe or group remain the warriors. Right. In, mm. in the Philippine history, you see that he's right. The uprising, um, I guess, the Spaniards and then during the revolutionary time and then in World War Two. He's right. Typically the warrior families and clans stayed the same. Right. He's right. So if you don't get the, the family system, just do an offshoot. Is there's there's you can meet in the middle. This is my personal you know belief. Is like you, there's a compromise, right? He's right. It's like understand that coming in, but um, you can always start your own FMA system. You're not beholden to to any one particular family, right? So meet 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 in the middle, but be be very cognizant of that when you start. That um, you can have a familia, you know. It's not like you share the same DNA with them or the clan thing. That means you're not so family. So accept that coming in. You don't bellyache when it's other martial arts systems doing it. Why bellyache when it comes to FMA? All right. So he makes some good points there. Um, there are things that used to be and have always been, but are, are changing now. Um, I, I don't agree that there's no belly aching when it comes to the topic of who is this torch going to get passed down to from other systems. I, I don't think that's uniquely a Filipino martial arts argumentation. Um, I think it happens across the board. I personally know, you know, people who dedicate their lives to Taekwondo and, uh, and, and, but he is right in that when you join a family system and you're aware that it's a family system, it shouldn't be within the scope of your intentions to one day take over that family. He's absolutely right. Um, in that regard, the solution is like, go start your own, you know, system and, and maybe don't call it FMA. And that's the part that I don't disagree with. So anyways, guys, that was that. Um, there were a lot of things that I disagreed with, a lot of things that I agreed with. None of this is personal. It's okay for us to have these discussions. And here's the thing. That, was a, that, was a, that wasn't like a private conversation, right, guys? That was a publicly uploaded discussion as this is. And so I'm 100% open to criticisms of my response as well. Maybe I was too emotional. Maybe I should have played the totality of that podcast. Maybe I should have hopped on immediately after watching it and, and run my mouth about how I feel about these things. But what I can tell you uh, is that uh, I... I 
I don't hide behind, you know, um, a fake name. Uh, my name is Paulo Rubio. I called people out on their opinions based on uh, how they wanted to be represented on camera. I, I didn't, uh, I, I was very direct, I think. And I, I, I was very upfront with how I was feeling about certain things that were discussed. And in Filipino culture, I understand that sometimes that ain't cool. There are, there's, a, there's an element of Filipino culture that tends to sweep things under the rug. Uh, and that's where I think I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate in that I was, uh, you know, I lived my first nine years in the Philippines, very tight knit, traditional family unit, right? Um, and then at nine years old, you know, my father moved the entire immediate family to Canada, and there were no other Rubios here. And so I got to experience these, these two often contrasting worlds. And I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of both it's not like once i left the philippines i stopped being filipino you know and it's not like once i became canadian i became 100 percent canadian um i think there are nuances to this discussion i i believe that the format that was uh, put in place was really dumb and i think it did a tremendous disservice to what would otherwise have been a really uh, good conversation um I believe that uh, you know, in 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 true Filipino fashion, you really have to examine the totality of this communication. You have to examine the format, the body language, the facial expressions, what was said before, during, and after to really get to the essence of what these individuals meant. I believe there were some standouts in that conversation, particularly Riddell. I thought was a standout. Um, I thought Tony was a standout. Um, and I, and I thought Michael played that game very well, considering that, you know, he, he I doubt that that he knew what he was getting into, but he 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 played by the rules and, you know, you can't really be faulted. Now, granted, uh, uh, some of my opinions are, are based upon feelings, right? I get that. Uh, you know, I can be emotional. That's fine, right? I, and I'm totally willing to be called out for that stuff. Um Totally willing to have any of these guys, by the way, anybody on this panel, any one of them, if you would like the opportunity to further discuss, I would be more than happy to bring you in and we can talk about it. You know, I'd love to have Dean Franco, actually, because, you know, one of the contents, one of the elements that, that, that was discussed was, you know, alluding to, you know, Dean. And I think it would only be fair. If uh, you know Paul and and or 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 any panelist can have a, an open, honest discussion about what they feel about what Dean Franco is doing, I will leave you with this: subscribe to FMA Discussion on YouTube. Go type it in. It's a very, very important landmark for the trajectory of the Filipino martial arts because Dean interviews. Our masters and grandmasters are two haunts or datus or gurus uh, in their own words. To be honest, I don't watch the totality of them um, because the, the library is quite vast and the interviews do go on uh, quite long. But I, I, from the beginning, when I saw what Dean Franco was doing, I, um, I wanted to get on board and to help support. Uh, what I really wanted to do was get Dean past a certain threshold on social media so that he can begin monetizing his channel and that he can expand his network. He's since done that. And by the way, any every dollar that is earned through the FMA Discussion YouTube channel goes back to supporting Filipino martial artists and Filipino martial arts instructors in the Philippines. That is by design by Dean Franco. He let me know of that as soon as I, uh, I, I started helping him develop that. FMA discussion is Dean Franco. Dean Franco is a white guy from Connecticut who just happens to love the Filipino martial arts, and that deserves our respect. And uh, I'm, I don't question his intentions. I don't question his integrity. I don't. When I, when I when I joined the FMA discussion forum, as my influence only in in the social growth of that forum 
started to yield results, I began to identify that some of these results were not conducive to my personal mission. Uh, it, it, it was toxic. It was really toxic. Some of the conversations there were just incredibly vile. And so I left. I left with no fanfare. I didn't say, oh, this forum is blah, blah, blah. I'm, I just left quietly, right? But since this arose and since I'm on my own platform, I want to say that what I didn't like about what happened when FMA discussion forum got bigger was uh, this uh, toxic resistance to actual good conversation because there are a lot of Filipino martial artists who remain insecure and aren't willing to have the kinds of discussions that I wish to foster. I'm all about promoting the art, history, and culture of the Philippines by way of Filipino martial arts, but I won't be silenced when it comes to discussing the vulnerabilities of the system um, the deficiencies in, in some of the ways that they're trained. And I won't be silenced when it comes to talking about uh, dishonesty and inauthenticity when it comes to the promotion of the Filipino martial arts. And like I said, I don't think we need to pick a side. I can love traditional and classical and be appreciative of, of what that is. I can promote the art, history, and culture of the Filipinos, of the Philippines, of the Filipino martial arts. And then I can be critical about the fact that there's a lot of Filipino martial artists who can't throw a fucking punch, <laughs> right? And, and, and why do I say these things in the way that I say them? I understand that some of it can be a little bit painful, particularly more painful if we carry certain scars. But that's really the only path to progress and evolution, we're not going to get anywhere by sweeping things under the rug as is sometimes the Filipino way. Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't work. And so I chose to leave that forum um, for that very reason, because I felt as if uh, honest dialogue was no longer an option. It was to, you know, the more clicky it became, um, I, I just felt like there was a an extremely vocal minority that began to represent uh, what they wanted FMA discussion to be, and I, I just I wanted nothing to do with it, so I left. As forums are, uh, uh, and and running, you know, a forum myself, I understand that it goes through its evolutions. It goes through peaks and valleys and cycles. So I'm not completely closed to the idea of wanting to go back and become a participant again in the discussions that happen at FMA discussion. I just don't think that currently um, a variety of opinion is necessarily welcome there. But I, I hope it gets better. I really do. I love the Filipino martial arts, whether or not you agree with my methodologies, whether or not you like me as a person, uh, it, it, it plays no bearing into my love for FMA. And I couldn't really, I, I couldn't give a damn about the critics because uh, I'm out here. Uh, I'm practicing multiple Filipino martial arts system, maybe in not the way that you might approve of, um, but I'm practicing the art. I'm embracing the elegance and grace of Filipino martial arts as an art, but I'm also out there smashing dudes and getting smashed myself. I My FMA has a passport and it travels and it goes against wrestlers and it goes against jujitsu, uh, jujiteros, and it goes against Muay Thai practitioners and it goes against boxers and it goes, uh, it, it goes, against and it presses up against everything that's available to me as somebody who travels right i try to find where the commonalities may be in pistol craft and in tactics law enforcement tactics military tactics citizen defender tactics because uh, i'm an explorer and i'm not going to close any of those doors and as i say these things i'm willing to be wrong and if if i am proven to be wrong which I am 100% open to, I will be forthcoming in public with my apologies directly. So 
I think that's the difference, you guys. I think FMA deserves more ambassadors who are willing to put themselves out there on the line and say, fuck it, fuck it. FMA is bigger and more important than my individual sense of, uh, of ego or self-righteousness. So that's what I'm trying to do. And I love the community that uh, we are all cultivating together, right? FMA source, God, what a bold, what a bold name, right? FMA source, and, and that can be a point of contention as well. And, and another reason for people not to like me, but FMA source, the community, it is growing, it is powerful, it is influential, it will continue to grow. We will not close our doors to any opinions. We will not close our doors to any uh, intellectual challenges, debates, none of that. We're 100% open. We're willing to be wrong. We're willing to fail. We're willing to make mistakes. And we're willing to take corrective action. That's why you subscribe to this channel. That's why you follow this channel. That's why you're a part of this community. Because against all odds, we're going to mitigate the negative effects of our ego because we love this damn thing way too much to do otherwise. Can I get an amen? Thank you guys for watching FMA Source. Thank you for watching the FMA Dumpster Fire uh, podcast. Uh, thank you for all the panelists that, that I, I, I played there. June, Paul, Julius, Michael, uh, Riddell, and Tony. Thank you for allowing me uh, to have something to discuss. And that's really, really important. Whether or not we agree or disagree, or maybe you didn't like my tone, or maybe I didn't like your tone, the fact that we can look each other in the eye, even through this artificial medium, and, and have these discussions is something that's valuable to me. And so I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Get the fuck out of bed, bitch, go! No.